Suppose someone had to do this essay topic. The automobile has affected modern society in the way we live in many ways. Some of these effects have been good, while others have not. In an essay of about 250 words, discuss the good effects, the bad effects, or both, that the automobile has had on modern society. Make sure you give examples to back up your ideas. Then he asks you to write a 250-word essay and said you have 45 minutes to do it, so start writing. What would you do? I'm stuck. Me too, Mr. Cox. This is not good. I have no idea where to start. And I have trouble knowing what to write and what not to write in an essay, Mr. Cox. You're not alone in that respect. So let me introduce a four paragraph essay format that we'll be using to learn how to write well-structured, organized essays. Another thing I don't understand is what's supposed to go into a paragraph or where to start it or where to stop it. I think this format should clear that up. Let me briefly describe the mechanics of a paragraph then I'll go over the essay format that we'll be using. Paragraphs usually have an introduction sentence to introduce to the reader what the paragraph is about. It then has some body sentences to explain the introduction sentence with examples or explanations. Then it has a conclusion sentence to close or wrap up the paragraph where it briefly re-mentions the examples or explanations from these sentences. Before we look at the essay outline, I want to clarify what we'll be learning in this video. This video will show you how to structure a short piece of writing. I will show you how to organize sentences into paragraphs and how to organize those paragraphs together to form an essay. This is not a video on proper English, nor will I be teaching you how to write sentences. I will assume that the viewer already knows how to construct simple sentences. The format we'll be using consists of four paragraphs, where each paragraph consists of four simple sentences. Paragraph one consists of these four sentences. Sentence one is where you'll state the topic you're going to write about, and you'll want to use as many of the original words from the topic as you can. I'll explain why when we start writing sample essays. You'll rewrite the topic as a statement so that from the very first sentence, the reader should be able to tell exactly what the topic of this essay is about. Sentence number two is where you're going to state the first general idea that you're going to use to explain your position on this topic. And you keep it in general terms here. You're not going to give examples or explanations yet. You'll do that in the following paragraphs. Sentence number three is where you'll state the next different general idea that you're going to use to explain your position on this topic. And make sure it's different from the first general idea. Sentence four is where you'll state your conclusion sentence for this paragraph. Your conclusion sentence is where you try to wrap up the paragraph by re-mentioning each idea only using different words. In this paragraph, you will introduce the topic and your general ideas here. You will only introduce them here. You will not explain them in this paragraph. You will wait until the following paragraphs to go into specific details. Now where do you get the information from that you're going to write about in paragraph number two? Paragraph two consists of these four sentences. The first sentence in this paragraph is again the introduction sentence for this paragraph. You look back to sentence number two in paragraph one and you rewrite that sentence here only using different words. You have to introduce what you're going to write about in this paragraph so that the reader knows what this paragraph is about. That's why you have to rewrite sentence number two again from paragraph number one here. Now the next two sentences you have to come up with specific examples to back up or explain idea number one. 
You want to give at least two specific examples here, but you could give more if you like. And once you've mastered this outline, you can then give as many examples as you like in each idea paragraph. Sentence number four is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph. You want to try and somehow mention both examples in this sentence to wrap up this paragraph. You're going to explain only idea number one here with specific examples and nothing else. Make sure you do not mention or introduce anything else but examples for idea number one here. And where do you get the information from that you're going to write about in paragraph number three? Well, again, you look back to paragraph one, sentence number three, and you rewrite that sentence in this paragraph in order to introduce what the paragraph is going to be about. Sentence number one is where you restate idea number two from paragraph one only using different words here so that the reader will know what this paragraph is about. The next two sentences are where you'll give specific examples to back up idea number two. And again, you can give more than two examples here to build a larger essay, and when you master this format, you should be able to do that. Sentence number four is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph. You want to try and somehow mention both examples in this sentence to wrap up this paragraph. And, as in the last paragraph, you only write about idea number two in this paragraph, nothing else. Make sure you don't write about or introduce anything other than information about idea number two in this paragraph. And where do you get the information from that you're going to write about in paragraph number four? Again, you look back to paragraph one for that information. Paragraph one is your guide to the essay. Everything that you're going to write about comes from paragraph one. Paragraph four is a conclusion paragraph for this essay. You look back to paragraph one and rewrite those first three sentences only using different words. Sentence number one is sentence number one from paragraph one rewritten using different words. Sentence number two is just sentence number two from paragraph one rewritten using different words. Sentence number three is just sentence number three from paragraph one, again, rewritten using different words. And sentence number four is your personal opinion sentence where you'll state your personal opinion about the topic, such as you agree with it, or you don't, or you like it, or you don't. You save your personal opinion for the last sentence to make sure you don't get too emotionally involved with the topic and risk the danger of jumping off the topic. If you do that, you will start writing about something not connected to the stated topic and your essay will be incorrect. You can see from this format how each paragraph is organized and how each paragraph is connected to each other. Everything comes from paragraph one. That paragraph is your guide as to what you'll be writing in paragraph number two paragraph number three, and paragraph number four. Paragraph number two is where you explain with specific examples the general idea that you gave in this sentence from paragraph one. Paragraph number three is where you explain with specific examples the next general idea you gave in this sentence from paragraph number one. Paragraph number four is where you'll rewrite paragraph one over again only using different words to conclude the essay. You're going to be given a topic sentence, then you'll have to create or generate some idea sentences, then create or generate some example sentences to back up those ideas you gave. Then come back where you started to drive the point home in your conclusion paragraph. They will give you the first sentence, and then it's your job to create the rest of the essay. And you're also going to have to get good at rewording things. As you can see from this organization, you can easily write five, six, or seven paragraph essays or more just by introducing more ideas in paragraph one, then constructing corresponding example paragraphs to explain those ideas that you introduced in paragraph one. But first, here are some common mistakes people make when writing essays. One is they start mixing the ideas and examples together in different paragraphs instead of keeping them organized and separated. Two, they jump off the topic somewhere in the middle of their essay and begin to write on something other than the stated topic, which will make their essay incorrect. Three, they do not fully understand a topic and begin to write on what they think is a topic, but it's not. Four, they start talking about something in the middle of the essay that they never introduced in the first paragraph. Five, they will introduce something in the first paragraph and never explain it in the following paragraphs. If you follow this outline, you should have no trouble keeping your essay well organized. I can see that. That outline looks pretty simple and straightforward. It is and I would strongly recommend that you commit it to memory so that you'll be able to reproduce it in places like a testing situation where you won't be able to bring it in with you. I'm certainly going to make sure I take the time to memorize this outline, Mr. Slee. Excellent. 
Now, before we start, let's explain the difference between a general idea statement and a specific example statement. Yeah, I'm not very clear on that. Here are some general idea statements. I went to New York City for vacation this summer. Or, I went shopping at the grocery store today and bought some food. Or, I had to call a repairman to fix my washing machine. Those are general idea statements without going into specific detail. Now, here are some specific example statements on those general ideas. 1. I visited the Statue of Liberty and it was an awesome sight to see. 2. I was also able to eat at many different restaurants which had a variety of ethnic foods. 3. I remember one restaurant where they had dancers and music from their native country dance and play while we ate dinner. Here are some specific examples on the next general idea. 1. I was out of bread and milk, so I made sure I picked some up. 2. I also noticed that they had some cheese on sale, so I made sure I bought several pounds of it. 3. I walked down the candy aisle, and even though I knew I shouldn't have, I purchased several large bags of candy bars. Now here are some specific examples on this general idea statement. 1. The repairman said it needed a new belt and motor to fix it. 2. He also noticed that the pump was old and said it too should be replaced. So he replaced it. 3. I was upset when I got the bill because it was almost as much as the machine itself was worth. You might be asking yourself where these ideas and examples come from. Well, I created them or made them up, just as you should be able to do. I think I'm beginning to get this. I'm going to have to learn how to create sentences to write good essays, right? That's correct. And the only way to get good at writing is to practice. It's like anything else. The only way you can get good at it is by practice. It looks like I'm going to have to practice writing general idea sentences and specific example sentences so I can get good at it. Good thinking. Now, do you think we can write an essay on a topic I showed you at the beginning of this video? I'm certainly ready. Me too. Bring on that topic again. Let me read the topic again. The automobile has affected modern society in the way we live in many ways. Some of these effects have been good, while others have not. In an essay of about 250 words, discuss the good effects, the bad effects, or both, that the automobile has had on modern society. Make sure you give examples to back up your ideas. Let's look at the first paragraph outline again. We have to come up with an opening sentence to begin our essay. It should contain as many of the original words from the topic as possible, and you should make it a statement as though you were speaking it to someone. Picture yourself sitting across from someone and you're going to speak to them what you wanted to write. Only write it down instead of speaking it. For some reason, people think that the written word has to be different from the spoken word, and that's not true. You should practice writing down things exactly as you would speak them. That's what writing is anyway, just spoken words that are written down on paper. So what you should do is pretend you have someone sitting across from you and you're going to tell them what you want to write. But instead of speaking it, write down your words on paper exactly as you would speak them. Essentially, that's what you're doing, relaying your spoken words through a piece of paper instead of you personally being there to explain it. The reader should hear what you're saying from reading that piece of paper. People tend to try and write beyond their speaking abilities. And when they do that, their essays become wordy, foggy, and hard to understand. When people explain something with spoken words, it's usually straightforward, simple, and clear. If you write as you would speak, then your essay should be straightforward, simple, clear, and easy to understand. Just for practice, you should write down a sentence on paper, then read it out loud to yourself. If it doesn't sound the way you would normally speak it, then rewrite it until it does. As you can see from the last three paragraphs I just wrote, that I didn't use fancy words or wordy long sentences at all to get my message across to you, and I was still able to do that clearly, concisely, and to the point. The best writing is the simplest, most straightforward kind of writing. Okay, let me see if I get this. I have to use as many of the original words as possible, and I have to make it a statement as though I was speaking it to someone. All right. Automobiles have affected modern society and the way we live in many ways. Excellent. That's a direct statement as though you were speaking it to someone. Does that first sentence convey what this essay is about? It sure does. If I read that first sentence in an essay, I'd know it was about how the automobile has affected society. 
Now here's where your job really starts. You're going to have to create some idea sentences to explain this topic, then some example sentences to back up those ideas. Can you think up some ways in which the automobile has affected society? Well, let me think. Owning an automobile makes getting to work much easier. Okay, that could be our first general idea. Bruno, can you come up with another one? People are able to use the automobile for pleasure. It allows them to go places for enjoyment. That's good, and those are two positive ideas. Can we also come up with a couple of negative ideas because it's a good idea to use one positive and one negative idea when you're writing your essay, and I'll explain that as we go on. Can you come up with some negative ideas? It costs a lot of money to own a car. That's good. That's a negative idea. Bruno, can you come up with another one? Cars are also bad for the environment. They pollute the air and use up natural resources. Excellent. Now let's look at all four of these ideas and pick the two that we're going to use in our essay. Let me point out here that you could use all four and write a six paragraph essay. One paragraph for the introduction where you introduce all four general ideas, four more paragraphs, one for the examples on each general idea, and one for the conclusion paragraph, which would be a total of six paragraphs altogether. But we'll stick with a four paragraph, two idea essay to start with. As I suggested earlier, you should always try to use a positive idea and a negative idea when constructing your essay. Why is that? If you use opposing or opposite ideas, it's much easier to keep them separated from each other in your next two example paragraphs. One of the mistakes people make when writing example paragraphs is that they jump back and forth mixing things together. When people use similar general ideas and then try to write separate example paragraphs, they tend to insert examples back and forth into both paragraphs, mixing everything together. So if you have a choice, try and come up with opposite ideas. It's much easier to keep those separated and organized. Okay, how about we use the first one and the third one? Makes getting to work easy and costs a lot of money to own a car. That's good. That's a positive general idea and a negative general idea. You must now make direct, deliberate statements out of those ideas. And remember, act as if you were speaking these statements to someone, but write them down instead. Let me try this. I'll take the first one. They can allow a person to choose many different jobs they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Very good. Bruno, can you take the other one and make a direct statement as though you were speaking it to someone? I think so. However, owning a car can be expensive with regular maintenance or if it breaks down. So far, so good. We need one more sentence. The conclusion sentence. Irving, can you somehow mention both of these general ideas in the last sentence to conclude this paragraph? I can sure give this a try. It's clear that owning a car can make getting back and forth to work easy. But on the other hand, it can cost a lot of money at today's labor prices. Those are excellent sentences. One thing you might want to remember when using opposite ideas is to use words like however and phrases like but on the other hand. We have now finished constructing our first introduction paragraph. Let's read this from beginning to end to hear how it sounds. Automobiles have affected modern society in the way we live in many ways. They can allow a person to choose many different jobs they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. However, owning a car can be expensive with regular maintenance or if it breaks down. It's clear that owning a car can make getting back and forth to work easy, but on the other hand, it can cost a lot of money at today's labor prices. It's important to remember to limit what goes into this paragraph. Do not introduce anything in this paragraph unless you plan on explaining it somewhere in the following paragraphs. And this paragraph contains 75 words. Now let's move on to our next two paragraphs where we give examples explaining those ideas we gave in the first paragraph. Here's the outline for paragraph number two again. Bruno, where do you find the information we write about in this paragraph? We look back to the second sentence in paragraph one and rewrite that general idea using different words for our opening sentence in this paragraph. That's correct. Can you rewrite that sentence using different words? I can try. Having a car allows people to work far from home in jobs that they would not be able to get without one. 
That's very good. Now we have to come up with two specific examples to back up this general idea. Irving, can you come up with a specific example on this idea? Let's see. An example of having a job far from home. How about this? For example, many people living in small towns may have to drive to another town to work every day and need a car. Okay, Bruno, can you come up with another one? Let's see. And there are also people who may live way out in the country who have to work in nearby towns and need an auto to get back and forth to work. Now all we need is a conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. Irving, do you want to take the last sentence? All right. There are many people who live in out of the way places or small towns who have to rely solely on cars to get to work each day. That was very good. Now let's read this paragraph all the way through to hear how it sounds. Having a car allows people to work far from home in jobs that they would not be able to get without one. For example, many people living in small towns may have to drive to another town to work every day and need a car. And there are also people who may live way out in the country who have to work in nearby towns and need an auto to get back and forth to work. There are many people who live in out of the way places or small towns who have to rely solely on cars to get to work each day. Also notice that you could have given more than two specific examples in this paragraph and made the paragraph much larger. And remember to limit what you write in this paragraph to only information on this idea. You look at the first sentence in this paragraph and make sure you give examples on whatever you wrote in that sentence and nothing else. And if you're keeping track of word count, this paragraph contains 104 words. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. Here's the outline for paragraph number three. Where do you get the information to write about in this paragraph? Irving? You get that information from paragraph one, sentence number three. We're going to write specific examples on this second general idea. That's correct. How do you do that? I have to rewrite that sentence using different words in order to introduce to the reader what this paragraph is about. The cost of regular maintenance and repairs can amount to large sums of money at today's labor costs. Okay, Bruno, can you come up with a specific example on this idea? Yes. For example, owning a car means you have to keep it up by doing things like regular oil changes, tune-ups, buying new tires and brakes. Excellent. Irving, can you write the next specific example? You bet I can. A car could also have a major breakdown like needing a new transmission or even having to have the engine rebuilt. Those are very good specific examples. Bruno. Can you wrap up this paragraph with the last sentence, the conclusion sentence? Okay, I have to mention both of these examples in this sentence. One thing for sure is that you're going to have to fork over money for maintenance and repairs if you decide to own an automobile. Well done. Let me read this paragraph from beginning to end to hear how it sounds. The cost of regular maintenance and repairs can amount to large sums of money at today's labor costs. For example, owning a car means that you have to keep it up by doing things like regular oil changes, tune-ups, buying new tires and brakes. A car could also have a major breakdown, like needing a new transmission, or even having to have the engine rebuilt. One thing for sure is that you're going to have to fork over money for maintenance and repairs if you decide to own an automobile. As in the last example paragraph, you could also give more than two examples here to build up this paragraph on the cost of owning an automobile. And again, Remember to limit what you write in this paragraph to just information on this idea. You look at the first sentence in this paragraph and make sure you give examples on whatever you wrote in this sentence and nothing else. And this paragraph contains 92 words. Now for the final conclusion paragraph for this essay. Here is a paragraph number four outline again. Where do you get the information to write about in this paragraph, Irving? You look back at paragraph one and rewrite those first three sentences only using different words to wrap up this essay. Can you take that first sentence and rewrite it for the introduction to paragraph number four? Yep. Automobiles have played a major role in society and have greatly influenced the way we live. Very good. Bruno, can you rewrite that next sentence? Yes. They have made it easy for people to get jobs in out-of-the-way places. 
Irving, the next one. Okay. But on the other hand, it can become very expensive to repair and maintain a car on a regular basis. Okay, now for your personal opinion on the automobile. You like it or you don't, or you agree with it or you don't. Use whichever applies here. Let me give this a shot. Even though there are some bad aspects to the automobile, I think it was a great invention and it has proved to be very useful in today's society. That's excellent. Let me read this paragraph all the way through from beginning to end to hear how it sounds. Automobiles have played a major role in society and have greatly influenced the way we live. They have made it easy for people to get jobs in out of the way places. But on the other hand, it can become very expensive to repair and maintain a car on a regular basis. Even though there are some bad aspects to the automobile, I think it was a great invention and it has proved to be very useful in today's society. And this paragraph contains 78 words. We have now put together a structured, well-organized four paragraph essay. You'll notice that the total word count for this essay is 349 words, which far exceeded the 250 word count we were looking for. All we had to do was focus on the format and organization of this outline and fill in the sentences and the word count automatically fell into place. Just focus on filling in the sentences and you don't have to worry about word count. It should automatically fall into place. I will read all four of these paragraphs from beginning to end at the end of this video for those of you interested in hearing how it sounds as a complete essay. That's awesome, Mr. C. This format sure makes essay writing a lot easier than all the other ways I tried to learn how to do it. I want to briefly go over the contents of each of these paragraphs to make sure you understand just what's supposed to go into each of them. The first sentence was restating the topic as a statement like you were telling it to someone. The second sentence is where you wrote your first general idea statement on this topic that you're going to explain in the next paragraph. The third sentence is where you wrote your second different general idea statement that you're going to explain in your third paragraph. This fourth sentence is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph where you tried to mention both of your general ideas to wrap up this paragraph. In paragraph number two, your first sentence was to rewrite the second sentence in paragraph number one in order to introduce to the reader what this paragraph is going to be about. This sentence is your first specific example you gave to explain this general idea. This sentence is your second different example you gave to explain this general idea. The last sentence again is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph where you tried to mention both examples using different words to wrap up this paragraph. In paragraph number three, your first sentence was to rewrite the third sentence in paragraph number one in order to introduce to the reader what this paragraph is going to be about. The next sentence is your first specific example you gave to explain this general idea for this paragraph. The next sentence is your second different specific example you gave to further explain the general idea for this paragraph. And as in the other paragraphs, this last sentence is your conclusion sentence where you mention both of your examples to wrap up this paragraph. In paragraph number four, your first sentence came from rewriting the first sentence from paragraph one using different words since this is your conclusion paragraph where you're going to restate everything that you said in the first paragraph, only using different words. Your second sentence is simply the second sentence in paragraph one, again using different words. The third sentence is just the third sentence in paragraph one rewritten using different words. And the last sentence is your personal opinion for or against a topic to wrap up the essay. Another way you could look at paragraphs is to imagine each paragraph is a sandwich. A sandwich consists of a top slice of bread and a bottom slice of bread with the center of the sandwich being the main ingredients. Consider the introduction sentence of a paragraph similar to the top slice of bread of a sandwich and the examples in the paragraphs as the main ingredients of the sandwich and a conclusion sentence similar to the bottom slice of bread of a sandwich. You wouldn't try and make a sandwich without a top and bottom slice of bread to hold the main ingredients together and you should also try and think of never constructing a paragraph without an introduction sentence to open up your paragraph and a conclusion sentence to close a paragraph in order to hold your main ideas and specific examples together. Another thing to remember is that if you have a ham sandwich and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you wouldn't mix those ingredients together. You would make sure you kept them separate. The same is true with your different idea paragraphs. You should make sure you don't mix the examples from one idea paragraph with another idea paragraph. Keep everything separated and organized, just as you would with different types of sandwiches.
Now, what if we wanted to use those other two general ideas that we came up with in the beginning of the essay instead of the ones that we did use? Could you do that? You bet I can. Me too, Mr. Cox, now that I have this format. Okay, let's write a four-paragraph essay like we just did, only using these two ideas. One of you construct the first paragraph, then the other one take the next paragraph, and go back and forth until we finish the essay. I'll take the first one. I have to write the topic sentence, then come up with two general idea sentences, then a conclusion sentence. Since the topic is the same, I can use the first sentence over again from the first essay. Automobiles have affected modern society and the way we live in many ways. Now I have to write those two general ideas as direct statements as though I was telling them to someone. The first one is, they have allowed people to go wherever they like, whenever they like, anytime they feel like it. The second one is, but on the other hand, with all the cars on the road today, it has caused serious worldwide pollution problems. Now for the conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. The modern day auto has given people freedom to jump in the car and drive wherever they want, but it has also been a major source of today's pollution problems. And this paragraph contains 85 words. Okay, Bruno, it's your turn. You construct the second paragraph. Okay. I have to rewrite the first general idea sentence in paragraph one and introduce this paragraph. Then come up with two example sentences explaining that idea sentence. Then a conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. Let's see. Owning an automobile can give a person the freedom to take a drive anytime the urge strikes them. Now I have to create two example sentences. Here's the first one. For example, if people want to take a vacation, they can go to several different places far away from each other instead of being limited to just one place by taking an airplane. Here's the second one. People can also take spur of the moment weekend getaways on a moment's notice by packing an overnight bag, jumping into the car, and driving away. Here's the conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. The ability to be able to drive anywhere a person wants to, at any time they want to, has certainly changed our society and the way we do things. And this paragraph contains 104 words. Now you take the next paragraph, Irving. I have to rewrite the second general idea sentence from paragraph one to introduce this paragraph, then create two example sentences to explain this general idea, then construct a conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. Here's the first sentence. Automobiles have become a major source of worldwide air pollution and have also tainted our waterways. Here's the first example sentence on this general idea. For example, car exhaust produces certain deadly chemicals that have built up over the years to cause major health problems for people not only in our society, but for people all over the world. Here's the next example sentence on this general idea. The improper disposal of used motor oil has been known to find its way into our local drinking waters and our lakes and rivers. Now for a conclusion sentence to wrap up this paragraph. It's very clear that our breathing air and drinking waters have been greatly affected by the invention of the automobile. That's a very good paragraph on the second general idea. And this paragraph contains 93 words. Now, Bruno, can you wrap up this essay by constructing the conclusion paragraph? Okay. I have to look back to paragraph one and rewrite the first three sentences from that paragraph only using different words. Here's the first one rewritten. The invention of the automobile has drastically affected society and the way it does things. Here's the second sentence rewritten. It has given society a new freedom it would never have had without it. Here's the third sentence rewritten. However, over the years, it has created many new health problems for young and old alike. Now for my I think sentence, my opinion. I think that the auto could be a real benefit if we could just fix all the pollution problems it produces. And this paragraph contains 65 words. You both did very good. This essay contains a total of 347 words. And as in the previous essay, we did not have to worry about word count at all. 
We just focus on the structure and fill in the four sentences in each paragraph, and the word count automatically fell into place. I will read all four of these paragraphs from beginning to end at the end of this video for those of you interested in hearing how it sounds as a complete essay. And how did you do? Were you able to come up with some specific examples on these general ideas like we did? Well, I certainly hope so. Let's construct one more essay, only we'll use a different topic, and this time we'll use three general ideas instead of two to create a five paragraph essay. The first paragraph is the introduction again. We'll have three example paragraphs for our three different ideas. Then our conclusion paragraph wrapping up the essay. Are you both ready to give this a try? I am, Mr. Cox. Me too. I know I can write an essay now. Okay, here's the topic. And you viewers should also try to write your own general ideas and specific examples along with us to practice. Families are having fewer children these days. Having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. In an essay of about 250 words, describe this impact. Be specific and make sure you give examples to back up your ideas. Now we have to be careful here and identify exactly what the topic is, because if we misidentify it and start writing on something else, our essay will be incorrect. How about this? Modern families are having a lot less children these days. Not quite. The focus here is not on having smaller families. Irving, can you identify the topic here? Let's see. It's hard being brought up as an only child in today's society. How about that? Still not correct. The focus here is not on being an only child. Let me give you a hint. First of all, look for statements in a topic that say, describe, or write about, or give your thoughts on. Or they will ask you a question, and the topic will be your answer to that question. Another thing you want to be aware of is that the topic may be stated in the first sentence. Other times they will write a lead-in to the topic first, then the actual topic could be stated somewhere in the middle. Or it could even be stated in the last sentence. The first part of any essay test will be for you to properly identify the topic so that you can make sure you're writing on exactly what they ask you to write about and nothing else. Now let's look at this topic again and try to figure out exactly what we're supposed to be writing about. And look for those words I suggested you look for. Okay, it says describe this impact. What impact? Well, look at the sentence directly before that one. Having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. We're supposed to write about how having even just one child can have an impact on parents. So the focus here is on parents. If I were writing this essay, I would use that exact sentence for my opening statement for this essay. Having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. I would do that to make absolutely sure that I nailed down the topic correctly. So we have our first sentence for our introduction paragraph. Now we have to come up with three different general idea sentences on how a child can affect parents. How does this sound? Raising a child can bring a lot of joy into parents' lives. Very good. Irving, can you come up with a different general idea? Sure. However, raising a child can be expensive. That's another great general idea statement. Bruno, can you come up with one more different general idea statement? How about, it can also take up a lot of time to raise a child. Excellent. We now need to make direct statements out of these three ideas so that we can add them to our opening paragraph. Irving, can you make a direct statement out of that first general idea? And make sure you write it down as though you were speaking it to someone. Only write it. How about this? Bringing up a child can be a very joyful and rewarding experience for parents. Good. Bruno, the next one? Okay. But on the other hand, raising a child can cost quite a bit of money. Again, very good. Irving, can you write the third one? You bet. It can also require a large amount of time to properly bring up an infant. Bruno, can you write the conclusion sentence for this paragraph, making sure you mention all three ideas in that sentence? Let's see. Child rearing can be a very joyful event for parents to undertake, but it can also take up a lot of time and cost a lot of money. That's very good. 
We have now constructed our introduction paragraph for this essay. Let me read this paragraph all the way through from beginning to end to hear how it sounds. Having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. Bringing up a child can be a very joyful and rewarding experience for parents. But on the other hand, raising a child can cost quite a bit of money. It can also require a large amount of time to properly bring up an infant. Child rearing can be a very joyful event for parents to undertake, but it can also take up a lot of time and cost a lot of money. And this paragraph contains 85 words. Next, we construct a paragraph where we give specific examples on the first general idea. Irving, why don't you try writing this paragraph from beginning to end on your own? I'll give it a shot, Mr. Slee. I have to start by rewriting this sentence from paragraph one. To create another human being can be a very rewarding experience for parents. For example, it's a unique opportunity to be able to watch a child grow to adulthood guided by their wisdom and knowledge. It can also be a joy to know that their child will carry on their family heritage. Being able to pass on what they have learned in life to another human being is certainly a very happy and rewarding thing for parents to experience. And this paragraph contains 78 words. Bruno, can you write the next paragraph on a second general idea from paragraph 1? Yes, I can. I just have to rewrite that idea sentence to start this paragraph. Bringing a child into the world can cost quite a bit with today's cost of living. For example, to feed, house, and clothe another person could run into a lot of money over a period of years. To educate a child is also a major debt not to be taken lightly. It's a huge financial responsibility to take care of and educate a child until they're old enough to support themselves and make their own life. And this paragraph contains 76 words. Irving, can you take the third general idea from paragraph number one and write an example paragraph explaining that idea? Yep, I rewrite this sentence from paragraph one to start. A potential parent better be ready to give up a lot of free time if they decide to have a child. For example, raising a child means that things like going to the movies whenever they feel like is out of the question. And if staying out late was part of their lifestyle, they have to give that up also to be a good parent. Having even just one child can drastically change the way parents used to spend their free time. And this paragraph contains 82 words. Now, Bruno, can you write the conclusion paragraph to wrap up this essay? I sure can. All I have to do is look back to paragraph 1 and rewrite those first four sentences only using different words. Then state my final I think sentence to wrap up this essay. It's clear that having even just one newborn will greatly change the way parents live. Watching a child develop under their guidance can be one of the great rewards of parenthood. However, it can be a very expensive endeavor to bring another human being into the world. And a parent better be ready to give up a lot of their free time in order to properly raise the infant. I think that although it's a wonderful experience to raise children, I don't think it's a wise decision for everyone to consider. That's excellent. And this paragraph contains 91 words. I will read this essay all the way through along with the other two essays at the end of this video for those of you who want to hear how they sound from beginning to end. And this essay contained a total of 412 words. We have now written three complete, well-constructed essays. You'll notice that all of our essays were way over the expected word count. You could write an essay that is 100 words less than we did and still meet the requirement of about 250 words. The point is that when focusing on the outline and filling in the sentences for each paragraph, it's easy to come up with enough words. And remember to practice picturing yourself sitting across from someone and speaking sentences to them. Only write them down exactly as you would speak them. At first, this may be difficult, but with time and practice, writing should become as natural as speaking. Let me now put up a simplified form of our essay outline that you should write down so that you can memorize it and recreate it whenever you need to write an essay. Here's paragraph number one. Sentence one is a topic sentence. Sentence two is a first general idea sentence. Sentence three is a second general idea sentence. Sentence four is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph. Here's paragraph number two. Sentence one is a first general idea rewritten. Sentence two is a first specific example on this idea. Sentence three is a second specific example on this idea. Sentence four is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph. 
Here's paragraph number three. Sentence one is a second general idea sentence rewritten. Sentence two is a first specific example on this idea. Sentence three is a second specific example on this idea. Sentence four is a conclusion sentence for this paragraph. Here's the fourth paragraph. Sentence one is a first sentence rewritten from paragraph number one. Sentence two is a second sentence rewritten from paragraph number one. Sentence three is a third sentence rewritten from paragraph number one. Sentence four is your opinion sentence or your I think sentence to wrap up this essay. And remember that all you have to do to create larger essays is to create more general ideas for your topic, which would give you more paragraphs. And you could also add more specific examples in your paragraphs to make them larger. Here's a practice topic that you should use to write your own essay now. Many people are getting their GED today. What are some of the advantages to having a GED? Write an essay of about 250 words and give examples to support your ideas. Here are some general ideas on this topic. Better employment and a better person. Here are some specific examples to use to back up those general ideas. You have more job choices with a GED and you can get much better jobs and you can make more money having a GED. You are more knowledgeable and you have more self-esteem having a GED. Now you should take those ideas and examples and construct your own essay using this format. Here's another sample essay topic. Income taxes play an important role in modern society. Explain why having an income tax is important. Write an essay of about 250 words and give examples to back up your ideas. Now I'll give you some general ideas and specific examples to get you started. Here are some general ideas. You have emergency services. And you have social services. Here are some specific examples on those general ideas. Police departments, fire departments, rescue squads. And in this one, public assistance, health care, and public education. You should now be able to write an essay on this subject about income taxes. I would strongly recommend that you practice if you want to get good at writing essays. I will now read the three essays that we created from beginning to end. And I hope this video has given you the foundation to become proficient at essay writing. It certainly has for me. Me too, Mr. C. It's an awesome format. Here's the first essay that we wrote on the automobile with the first two general ideas. Automobiles have affected modern society in the way we live in many ways. They can allow a person to choose many different jobs they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. However, owning a car can be expensive with regular maintenance or if it breaks down. It's clear that owning a car can make getting back and forth to work easy, but on the other hand, it can cost a lot of money at today's labor prices. Having a car allows people to work far from home in jobs that they would not be able to get without one. For example, many people living in small towns may have to drive to another town to work every day and need a car. And there are also people who may live way out in the country who have to work in nearby towns and need an auto to get back and forth to work. There are many people who live in out-of-the-way places or small towns who have to rely solely on cars to get to work each day. The cost of regular maintenance and repairs can amount to large sums of money at today's labor costs. For example, owning a car means that you have to keep it up by doing things like regular oil changes, tune-ups, buying new tires and brakes. A car could also have a major breakdown, like needing a new transmission or even having to have the engine rebuilt. One thing for sure is that you're going to have to fork over money for maintenance and repairs if you decide to own an automobile. Automobiles have played a major role in society and have greatly influenced the way we live. They have made it easy for people to get jobs in out-of-the-way places. But on the other hand, it can become very expensive to repair and maintain a car on a regular basis. Even though there are some bad aspects to the automobile, I think it was a great invention and it has proved to be very useful in today's society. Here's the second essay we wrote on the automobile using the other two general ideas. Automobiles have affected modern society and the way we live in many ways. They have allowed people to go wherever they like, whenever they like, anytime they feel like it. But on the other hand, with all the cars on the road today, it has caused serious worldwide pollution problems. 
the modern day auto has given people freedom to jump in the car and drive wherever they want, but it has also been a major source of today's pollution problems. Owning an automobile can give a person the freedom to take a drive anytime the urge strikes them. For example, if people want to take a vacation, they can go to several different places far away from each other instead of being limited to just one place by taking an airplane. People can also take spur-of-the-moment weekend getaways on a moment's notice by packing an overnight bag, jumping into the car, and driving away. The ability to be able to drive anywhere a person wants to, and any time they want to, has certainly changed our society and the way we do things. Automobiles have become a major source of worldwide air pollution and have also tainted our waterways. For example, car exhaust produces certain deadly chemicals that have built up over the years to cause major health problems for people not only in our society, but for people all over the world. The improper disposal of used motor oil has been known to find its way into our local drinking waters and our lakes and rivers. It's very clear that our breathing air and drinking waters have been greatly affected by the invention of the automobile. The invention of the automobile has drastically affected society and the way it does things. It has given society a new freedom it would never have had without it. However, over the years it has created many new health problems for young and old alike. I think that the auto could be a real benefit if we could just fix all the pollution problems it produces. Here's the third essay we wrote on how having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. Having even just one child can have a dramatic impact on parents' lives. Bringing up a child can be a very joyful and rewarding experience for parents. But on the other hand, raising a child can cost quite a bit of money. It can also require a large amount of time to properly bring up an infant. Child rearing can be a very joyful event for parents to undertake, but it can also take up a lot of time and cost a lot of money. To create another human being can be a very rewarding experience for parents. For example, it's a unique opportunity to be able to watch a child grow to adulthood guided by their wisdom and knowledge. It can also be a joy to know that their child will carry on their family heritage. Being able to pass on what they've learned in life to another human being is certainly a very happy and rewarding thing for parents to experience. Bringing a child into the world can cost quite a bit with today's cost of living. For example, to feed, house and clothe another person could run into a lot of money over a period of years. To educate a child is also a major debt not to be taken lightly. It's a huge financial responsibility to take care of and educate a child until they're old enough to support themselves and make their own life. A potential parent better be ready to give up a lot of free time if they decide to have a child. For example, raising a child means that things like going to the movies whenever they feel like it is out of the question. And if staying out late was part of their lifestyle, they have to give that up also to be a good parent. Having even just one child can drastically change the way parents used to spend their free time. It's clear that having even just one newborn will greatly change the way parents live. Watching a child develop under their guidance can be one of the great rewards of parenthood. However, it can be a very expensive endeavor to bring another human being into the world. And the parent better be ready to give up a lot of their free time in order to properly raise the infant. I think that although it's a wonderful experience to raise children, I don't think it's a wise decision for everyone to consider. Happy and successful writing to all of you.